Hey everybody, take two. <laughs> we are doing a faith segment today on gifts versus fruits, right? Um, this is kind of a combination of about three different things, two of which are from the YouVersion Bible app. One is discerning the spirit and the other one is praying effectively. And then a book I'm currently reading called The Bait of Satan. And this is just like a bunch of different notes and I put some things together for this. Now, Romans 12, 6 talks about gifts that are given. Matthew 25, 14 through 30, that I believe is the parable where the master is giving gold so much to each one, tells them to invest it. Some of them take it and do something with it. One of them does not. Um, the big differentiation here is a gift is given and a fruit is cultivated. So think about when you give a gift to someone, right? You want to see them use it. You want to see them enjoy it and take pleasure in it and maybe share that with other people. You don't want to see it just sit on a shelf and not have anything happen to it, but it's still given. It's something that's been given to you freely. Fruit is cultivated, and I think farming with cultivation. I think how much work is involved with tending to animals or tending to the field and the crops and, and everything that you have to do, the pruning and, and the care that you have to give and the protection you have to provide in order to harvest something, right? So I think about that. Now, the warning in this is that we are judged according to our fruit. We're not judged according to what's been given to us. We're judged according to how we cultivate and what is produced from fruit. And that intercession of these is where our calling lies, right? Somewhere in the intercession of that, I kind of labeled it passions plus gifting plus opportunities equals glory to God. And that's where your calling comes in is that whatever it is that we're doing, that we want to be doing it for the glory of God and what glorifies God, serving others, helping others, bringing, bringing the lost to him to help him, to help them get saved, right? So, with cultivation, I also think growth, right? If you're thinking about animals growing or, or plants growing, there's three different types of growth. There's a physical growth, which is basically a function of time. Over time, you change physically. Intellectual growth is a function of learning, um, and that is some is, is given, some you're born with, and then some you feed yourself with, with studying and reading and listening and that sort of thing. Um, spiritual growth is neither. Spiritual growth comes through obedience, and that's where I put this believing equals obedience. It's not an acknowledgement. So I think of that as in the culture we live in today, a lot of people say they believe certain things or they're really just giving acknowledgement or an, an agreement with something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they believe it, right? Even the demons believe. So I take this into my own life. If I teach nutrition and I teach health and wellness and I say I believe it and I agree with it and I think it's a good thing for everybody but I don't actually do anything with it and I don't go out and live it for anybody else to see, then how much can you really say that you believe it if it doesn't take that kind of hold on you? So some scriptures here we're going to reference is Psalm 37, 4. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now the delight in this means to be soft, pliable, willing, and have a yielding posture. So I take that to mean waiting, listening, and then looking. Okay, so a prayer that goes along with that was just to just basically say, Lord God, is there anything that you want to say to me instead of, you know, me wanting to say something to you? So when I was young, I used to list, look at the scripture and I think, oh, the desires of my heart. And I would list all the things that I thought I wanted. So having that delight in the Lord meaning, means that I'm willing to let him change me. I'm willing to kind of get pruned a little bit. And in doing so, the delights of my heart, the desires of my heart change, right? They change and they become more in line with trusting that what God wills is what's really best for me and then being willing to accept that. So another scripture is 1 Peter 4 verse 1 and that's into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This is her inheritance is kept in heaven for you. So I take this over, back over to your calling. Um, your inheritance that you're getting or that you're, you're preparing to leave to somebody else could very well be of eternal value. And that's, again, to me, I hear souls, lost souls. The last scripture is Psalm 19, 12, and 13. Who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Who can discern their own errors? Only God can do that. And I 
think and I believe that a lot of times we can be operating in a place that we don't think we're doing anything wrong, right? We, 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 are, we may not realize that we have a wrong attitude about something. We may not realize that we're really outside of God will, God's will or we're behaving in a, in, a, in a wrong way because that's just what we've always known. So the only person that can really divide and discern that is the Lord. Okay, so that's a, that's a good prayer. I kind of like that prayer. So how do you kind of bring this all in, in together here is through prayer. Um, prayer opens the door. It unlocks the door for direct communication between you and the Lord. You know, knock and it will be open. Seek and you will find. So when you look for the Lord and you look for his wisdom, you're going to find it. And prayer is a great way to communicate with him and find out where you stand with him and where he stands with you and what he wants and all that. So here's just a little, we call that an acronym. Okay. Pray, praise, repent, ask, and yield. Praise um, should be our first go-to in prayer. Uh, to me, we got to give acknowledgement to, to God for who he is, the power and authority as the almighty creator of everything. You know, we need to give him praise and worship because it's, it's, it's his alone. Um, repentance to me is always the next step because we have to be willing to acknowledge our part, acknowledge and accept responsibility for, for our issues once they're made known to us, um, to just repent and confess and get that out and get free from that. Ask is where then we can take our requests to the Lord, right? That's where we can say, what have you called me to do? What's the fruit that you want to see me produce? Or, or heal a friend of mine or help a friend. You know, that's where we can go and put our petition before Christ. Um, then we're back to the yielding, which is the take the light. That's where we wait and we listen. And we look for opportunities, right? So that's where that part comes in where we just... And here's what I'm going to say um, in this is that I've been praying for something particular for quite some time now, like years possibly. And I've had like silence, like crickets chirping. I don't feel like I'm really hearing from the Lord on this. Um, so what I've learned in that is silence means that you just stay the course. You keep doing what you're doing until God tells you to do otherwise. Now, tests locate a person. And I believe that testing and trials and things of that nature are one of the ways that help us determine our spiritual growth and where we are spiritually. How you react under pressure is how the real you reacts. So are we responding? Are we being emotional? Um, are we really trusting God and, and being obedient in it? So I think a lot of growth can come from that. How we handle the tests and trials that come our way, how we handle the pressures in our life, our attitudes, our mindsets, all of that. It tells a lot about us. I mean, I myself, I can see myself in a situation, I think something I've done and be like, where did that come from? So it's it really kind of reveals things about you. And God's always about, you know, when you talk to him, he's always about, okay, deal with you first. Deal with you first. So how do we end this? And that's how I said before, with a prayer. And here's the prayer that I'm recommending. God, put the spotlight on anything in my life that has raised a barrier between you and me, and I will repent of it. Now, if you're not willing to repent, maybe the first prayer you need to say is, Lord God, make me willing to repent then. I don't know. But when you put that anything in there, it could be anything. <laughs> and a lot of times I go with a preconceived notion. I'm, I'm praying this and here's what he's going to bring to my attention. And you just cannot put God in that box because without fail, he brings something else that you weren't expecting and that you're sometimes not ready to deal with yet. And you're like, well, I don't want to be sorry for that yet. So I would just encourage you to keep that mind open Keep that yielded posture of submission before the Lord and keep that line of, of communication with him. Just keep it open. Keep talking to him and wait patiently. So search these scriptures yourself. Go read them. See if the Lord brings anything different to you than he brought to me. And thanks for tuning in.